There are a lot of videos out there that explain how a pipe organ works mechanically, but I haven't seen any that explain how we get from the mechanics uh, to the various different ways that organs can sound. Uh, after all, it can sound delicate, like this. Or kind of medieval, like this. Or like that behemoth that we love. I'm going to try and explain how we get from the former to the latter. Pipe organs are like ogres, lots of layers. And I thought that I would help illustrate this, uh, hourly speaking, by creating a kind of virtual organ to peel back the onion. Uh, so we have here a 17-stop virtual organ created by combining sound clips from the Encyclopedia of Organ Stops, organstops.org, playing St. Anne, which is uh, more commonly known as Oh God, I Help in Ages Past. Uh, you will be thoroughly bored of this tune by the end of this video, but really the best way to understand how these uh, sounds mesh together is to hear the same piece being played with different sounds, and so you can hear them come together and combine. Before we begin, we do have to briefly talk about mechanics, specifically the organ's two main input devices. Now, everyone understands what a keyboard does. You play notes. But on an organ, while else being equal, pressing a key isn't going to do much. Organs have groups of pipes that sound a certain way, and you need to tell the organ which sounds, and so which groups of pipes, you want to come out when you press the key. These groups of pipes are represented, functionally and organizationally, by the organ's other input device, the stop. So you can think of a stop as being a set of pipes that sound a certain way, and they'll be referred to as such. Now, understand that for each stop, there's one pipe in the organ for each key on the keyboard, so the number of pipes can get quite rapidly out of control. My little 17-stop organ here would have more than 500 pipes, even with a modest three-octave keyboard. The rendition of St. Anne before sounded quite impressive with a full organ. That's because for that tune, where you have four notes being played at most points, with all the stops pulled, you're hearing 68 pipes speaking at any given moment. The other thing to understand is while you can and will use several stops at once, they're organized to sound in different octaves. Stops where the key middle C plays the pitch middle C are called eight-foot stops. Don't worry about why. Stops that sound an octave higher are called four-foot stops. Two-foot stops sound an octave above that. And larger organs have a one-foot stop to annoy dogs. Stops that sound an octave lower are called 16-foot stops. And an octave below that are 32-foot stops. Federation organs carry a 64-foot stop for auto-destruct purposes. So let's turn to the sounds. Here's the fundamental tone of this organ. It's an 8-foot diapason stop. There you are. Sounds great, clear and pleasant, but it seems to be lacking something. And it's really when we add in the 4-foot principle, so that's a different sounding stop that sounds one octave higher. It starts to sound much more like the rich sound that we're used to. Now, we can richen this mixture even more by adding one more octave above and below, and we're going to do that with a two-foot principle and a 16-foot diapason. Halfway through, I'm going to pull the one-foot principle, and you'll hear that it adds just that extra little sparkle to the top. Other stops are designed to sound like other instruments, typically wind instruments, like oboes, flutes, brass instruments, and so forth. And they have all sorts of different sounds. This 8-foot gedect sounds kind of breathy. This 8-foot whole flute sounds more like a clarinet to me. Let's hear the flutes together. Other sounds are more brash. Here's the four-foot trumpet. Or we can mix together, for example, the clarion, trombone, and four-foot chimney flute.
Here's the 8 foot diapason, hall and chimney flutes, 4 foot spitz float, and 16 foot Liebeck attack. The Lieblick is tonally somewhere between a Gedacht and a Diapason. Uh, so if I put all three together for you here, here, you'll hear that they sound quite comely together. Okay, so now we're going to start to build this back together. Uh, we want to get uh, more weight and uh, force to the sand, so we're going to add back in the brass stops, the trumpet, trombone, the clarion, and the 16-foot Lieblick. Okay, so that's starting to sound much richer and more powerful. Uh, now let's add the flutes back in. Okay, and so finally to pull all the stops back out, we add back in the 4, 2 and 1 foot principles and the 16 foot diapason. So there we are. Uh, I hope this has illustrated how combining pipes of different timbres, uh, either because they're constructed of different materials or in different ways, uh, sounding at uh, parallel octaves uh, can combine in a way that produces the sounds uh, that we're used to and to provide quite a wide range of sounds from these instruments, uh, but that in a way that combine uh, to produce uh, a really quite full and rich sound. Uh, you can really hear the way that these uh, can be used. Uh, in miniature, any Sunday you, know, you go to church and you'll hear that the organist will... Uh, increase the number of stops that he's pulled as the as the last hymn goes uh, and goes on as the procession moves back up the uh, up the aisle the organist will usually start to pull out more stops so you'll start fairly quiet and, and build up um, but a really good example of this is if you listen to Nimrod um, from Elgar's Enigma Variations you'll hear that that starts off with just a very soft string uh, set of string stops uh, and it rises and falls, but the general drift is, you know, as you main theme and move through the piece, uh, more and more uh, of the resources of the organ uh, are pulled in, uh, or indeed out, as the case may be, uh, until you have this uh, really quite, uh, quite dramatically powerful sound uh, coming from this instrument. <laughs>